All right, welcome YouTube peeps. 3.2, Monday's homework review. Okay, create a bar graph for the data below. Now you could have the numbers going this way, the, the bar graph going that way, or you can have it going up. Let's have it going up. So you wanna start at zero, and you just want to make sure your intervals are the same. So you're counting the same amount in between each number. And you want to make sure you cover all your numbers. So we got to go at least past nine. Skip counting by twos is usually a good idea. You want the same amount of space in between each number, which looks pretty good. If you see here, see how the gaps are kind of the same? And we're skip counting by twos. That's called the interval. Our interval is two. We got dogs, cats, fish, birds. Dog is seven. That goes right in the middle of six and eight. Don't color the whole thing in thick, just kind of good enough. Cat is all the way up in between 8 and 10. Fish, 3 in between 2 and 4. Birds is 4. You're going to go all the way to 4. All right, so there is a bar graph. All right, what do these two shapes have in common? Let's see, they're both quadrilaterals. Quad means four, like the four-wheeled bikes that people take to the desert. They are, are they rhombuses? This looks like a rhombus. A rhombus, all sides have to be equal. This does not look like a rhombus because these lines look longer. They are parallelograms though, right? Let's see. Parallelogram, four sides, opposite sides parallel. Yes. I mean, they're both polygons. That's pretty easy though. Polygon is a closed shape and it cannot have any curvy lines. I mean, you could get real. They both have parallel lines. They both have parallel lines. Do they have perpendicular lines? No. They both have lines. That's going to get a little cheesy. You could say the sum of their inside angles are 360. That's probably getting a little too technical. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with those right there. Okay, we're gonna getting into fractions here, so I need to cut each of these holes into four. The bottom number in a fraction, you might want to write this down. Oops. How many parts? make up whole. The bottom number in a fraction tells you how many, ooh, this is crucial, equal parts. That's a crucial part of what it means to be a fraction. You have to cut up the shape so that each piece is the exact same size. How many equal parts make up a whole? The top number in a fraction is how many parts we are counting. It's a little messy there, but how many parts we are counting is the top number. 
and we'll take some notes on fractions even more in our test tips book. It's a class favorite. Once again here, bottom number, how many equal parts make up the whole? The top number, how many parts we are counting? Okay, so I got a circle here. To divide something that's a circle into four parts, you're going to make a plus sign. Those are four equal parts that make up a whole. So this circle is cut into fourths. 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 What about cutting a square into fourths? Same thing. Plus sign. Fourths. And then cutting this rectangle into fourths. Plus sign. Now there are other ways obviously to cut a rectangle into fourths, right? See this rectangle right here? You could go like this, cut it in half, and then cut each of those halves in half. That's fourths also. Look at this rectangle. You can also cut this into half, and then cut those halves into half. So you can do a plus sign or you can kind of slice it up like this. Can you make a multiplication sign with a rectangle? Yeah, those would all be the same. Can you make a multiplication sign with a rectangle? No. These pieces here look smaller. I think those pieces on the end would be on the end would be smaller if you cut a rectangle using a multiplication sign. It looks like it'll work with a square, but not a rectangle. These pieces on the end are going to be smaller. You just look at how big this piece is, right? Okay. All right. That is it for 3.2. Math help.